Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2016 Volkswagen Beetle convertible R-Line Turbo, the 2.0T, same engine the GTI has in it. We're up here on my favorite windy mountain road, and I'm going to tell you what I think. Now, before we go for a test drive, I gotta tell you something very important. I'm a Volkswagen enthusiast. I've owned a lot of these cars. I like them. I've had Beetles, I've had other Volkswagens, so I'm not gonna be the most fair and balanced journalist on this. So if you want me to bag on this car, you might as well move on to another vehicle because most of what you're gonna hear here is some pretty pretty much liking it. Now, there are a few things I'm gonna point out because I'm not blind, I'm not like a brand loyalist that completely doesn't see anything wrong, but just know before we get going that, well, I'm a Volkswagen guy. So, with that, let's put the top down. This does have a power top. When you look at it when the top's up, you can see that it has the same roof line that the coupe has. One touch, windows go down, everything's down. Now before we get started on our drive, I am going to put the windows up and I hate it when I see people doing that, but because I'm recording, I have to. Otherwise, you're never going to hear what I have to say. So windows are going up. We do have the top down though, and it's a beautiful day out here in the desert. Summer in Phoenix, it's a hundred and God knows what. So off we go. Now before we really get going on the drive, I do want to point out some of the things that make this car what it is. The R-Line. What that means is we're the sporty model, top of the line. This has the aggressive body package on it. Front fascia, very angular, which is actually a juxtaposition to the rest of this car, which is mostly curves. But it's very aggressive looking. You've got nice driving lights down there. Standard on this one, we're in the SEL R-Line, so it's got the nice headlights, the Xenon headlights with the LED driving light. Really fancy elements going on there. Also, this has the 19-inch Tornado-style wheels. Behind those wheels, you can see the red brake calipers, kind of sporty. They really try to make it fun. After all, this is a Beetle. At the back, you also have a rear fascia, which is a little bit different. You've got dual exhaust tips back there. A little bit more aggressive look to that fascia. So it stands apart visually from the standard Beetle. And of course, you've got the R-Line badges there on the side. The interior, you also have a very upgraded experience, although not quite as different from the standard Beetles. Again, because we've got the SL, I'm sitting in some very nice leather sport seats, not the vinyl that comes standard. Now these seats, they're very comfortable, they're manually adjustable. Now, at $36,000 and some change, I'd expect, now well, maybe a little bit of uh, power going on here, but no, no, they don't have that. But they are comfortable, lots of adjustments going on, so you can find that good space. They really feel like GTI seats to me. They might be the same or very similar underneath, but that's what's going on here. The other thing is this has the R-Line steering wheel. Nice logo down there. It's got paddle shifters, and ahead of it, you've got well, a Volkswagen Beetle instrument cluster. It does have all the information you need. Tachometer, big speedometer. Now, when it comes to trim inside, the design of this is very retro. It's not like the old new Beetle that had the big patio slab for a dash. This feels a little bit more traditional, but we've got a nice brushed aluminum applique across the dash. Up on top here, you've got the big gauge cluster, which has a couple of things you don't need, but there's a turbo boost gauge, oil, although nobody really cares much about oil. It's there. Nonetheless, very nice interior. Back seat, you can actually put people back there, but it's not going to be the roomiest thing in the world. Comfort, for the most part, is pretty good. Storage, I got two glove boxes, not bad. And the trunk, it's pretty small very small in fact because there's just now there's not much space but there is a spare tire under that lid back there now we're going to get into curves here but i do want to finish up with the interior very high quality materials switch gear ergonomics everything is really on point and i'm a volkswagen guy so it pleases me I, what can i say so the interior five of five stars now let's talk about the powertrain since we're really in the right spot to do it two liter turbocharged four cylinder, basically the same exact engine you're gonna find in the GTI. Comes with a six speed manual or a six speed DSG automatic, which is what I've got here. I do have it down in sport mode now. 
and I could be using the paddle shifters, which work very well, but it's easier for me to do what I'm doing talking to you right now. Let it shift itself. And the point there is it has very nice rev match downshifts, and it's right there when you ask for it. It's right there when you put your foot on it coming out of a corner. Now, 210 horsepower, not the most power for a two liter turbo out there right now. Ford, Ford, you know, they offer 240 with theirs. And in fact, virtually everybody with a two liter turbo, right around 240, 250, right in that neck of the woods. We're only at 210 here, but what Volkswagen's done, they've just taken a more conservative route here. The payoff for that is it's more refined. It's, it's a much smoother, silky smooth, nice sewing machine of an engine. And so when you push on it, it just sort of thrums. It revs nice. It's never a racket. Woo. And it's always willing. It's always ready to be happy and play with you. Now, one thing I will point out is that it runs on premium fuel to get the 210 horsepower. It's not required though. You can do regular unleaded but you're not gonna get the horsepower. That's the asterisk you will see at the end of the video here when I show the specs is that premium fuel's not required, but if you want the horsepower, it is. But it'll run just fine on the cheap stuff for everyday driving. Now, fuel economy, this is rated at 25 MPG combined, and that is exactly what I've gotten with it during my week of driving, and I'm pretty pleased with that. Pretty pleased with that for a car like this. This is a heavy car, and it's actually not all that small. So when it comes to powertrain, what can I say? Again, the Volkswagen guys coming through here, there's a whole lot to like. I wish it had a few more ponies, but it's still pretty pleasing as it is. Therefore, powertrain, five out of five stars. Next part of our conversation is about the handling and the driving experience. Well, first off, we're in a convertible. That usually means less when it comes to handling, grip, all of the things that make a car handle good because you've not only got more weight, but you've got less structure. So let's talk about that. Yes, less structure, which means a little bit of shaking, a little bit of shutter, particularly here over the rougher stuff. That's how it goes with a convertible. Very few convertibles out there, you don't have that. So what they've done to sort of accommodate that situation, especially with these 19 inch wheels this has, is the suspension's a little bit more on the softer side. So what I found up here, and this road isn't exactly smooth, is that it's pretty refined. They've managed to tune the suspension to give you enough grip to make it fun to drive. It doesn't feel like a complete slug when you throw it into a curve, but you do know you're driving a heavy car that was really meant for enjoying the scenery just a little bit. And so it has enough gusto to it, enough stiffness, enough grip that you can push it, but it really starts giving you signals that, hey, slow down and enjoy the view. That's really sort of what it's about. So in that way, it's a nice balance, I think, with the buyer profile of this car, because honestly, the Canyon Carver that wants a GTI, probably gonna buy a GTI. I would, if that's what I wanted, I'd buy the GTI. This is a car that gives you a little bit of that sporting character that car has, but pretty much it's about now enjoying what you can see. So handling, I'm very pleased with it. Even though it is a convertible and it's lost some of its stiffness, it's still pretty darn rewarding overall. So chassis, five stars. There again, probably not surprised. But now let's get to a few more things here. Infotainment. This has the MIB2 infotainment system, which is new. And basically it's an improved version of what they had before. This is top of the line here. So we have Fender Audio. Now Fender Audio, in my opinion, one of the best in the business for how it sounds, especially in this price class, because the only one better out there, in my opinion, is the Mark Levinson system you're gonna find in the Lexus cars. Well, in those cars, that's a three or $4,000 option. Here, it's with the trim level. It's not an extra thing. The audio is absolutely awesome here. Now this new user interface, it has a new screen. It works much better when you touch it. The menus are far more readable. Everything's just more responsive and you've got better connectivity now with their CarNet app and you've got Apple CarPlay, you've got Android Auto and they have a USB port now. That's something I used to bitch about incessantly with Volkswagen was they didn't have a USB port so that you could plug in a charge at the very least, but you can 
also have some other connectivity. So I'm happy now with their infotainment system. It really is, I think, one of the best now. So again, we're talking about five stars. Now we're going to talk about some of the other things that aren't going to get five stars. So I've gotten the gushing Volkswagen enthusiast out of me. Now we're going to talk about a couple other things. And what are they? What are they? Well, quality. Now, there's a lot of people out there that think Volkswagens aren't very good cars because they're not reliable. Well, look, I've owned not quite a dozen. If you love the cars, you put up with a lot of stuff. The cars have actually been pretty darn reliable for me. When things do go wrong, they're either very big or they're very small. They're little things that cost a little bit to fix. But my theory on it is if you buy new Volkswagens, you lease them, you only keep them during the warranty period, then you turn it in and you get another one. It's just how it works. But build quality, that's really what I talk about when I talk about quality. Now, build quality on this, I think is absolutely great. You've got paint that is very good, fit and finish, very good. The interior, the materials in here, some of the best in the business. I am very impressed with that overall. But because we're in a convertible with these 19 inch wheels, we do get a lot of rattles and squeaks in here over the rougher stuff. That is what you're gonna get. These doors, when you slam them, don't have the typical Volkswagen slam that we all like, that, that's very good. So in all honesty, this is a car that the quality level could be a little bit better. So I'm gonna throw you people a bone out there that think I'm being completely biased and I'm gonna rate quality at four out of five stars. So there's that. Now is the part of the test drive where I typically wrap things up and I show you the specs. One thing I'll tell you is that it's pretty obvious right now is I like the car. I like it so much, I'd buy it. I've already bought some before, but I'd buy it again. Even though it's got a couple little things I think should be better, I just like the car. That's the bottom line. So it goes on my I buy list for 2016. That's probably a given. I should have probably just told you that right up front. But let's talk about the specs and the value because that does play into the total score of this test drive. Now. As you can see the price there, that's that's pretty heady for a car like this. Most people are gonna look at a, a Beetle and say, gosh, you're getting close to $40,000 there. How is that a value? Well, look, this is a boutique car, a boutique car. What that means is you don't need it. It's not like a Corolla or a Jetta where we're comparing features, what do you get for the money? This is a car you buy because you want it, you like it. It just hits your soft spots, which that's really what it does for me. So. When you look at value, it's really hard to put a number on that because there aren't very many competitors here. There is nothing else just like this on the market. But I'll throw a bone to the people out there that think I'm being completely, completely head over heels for this car and put value at four stars. So when you put that in with everything we've already talked about, that's four and a half stars for this review. Still pretty good, huh? What can I say? All right, friends. Well, now is the part of the video where I wrap it up with a little bit of personal commentary and I ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But first, the bait, and that is a little bit about this car. It's a pretty rare bird because the R-Line, if you go to the VW website, you're gonna find out that it's order only. In parentheses, it says right there when you try to build one or you try to get information on it, order only. And basically what that means is, is Volkswagen, they're not stocking these things on dealership lots. There aren't that many of them around if you can find one at all. If you want one, you, know, you gotta go to the dealership and you gotta order it and wait for it. I guess the upshot is there, you can have exactly what you want, colors, whatever, but you're gonna have to sort of put some effort into getting this car. Now, if you don't wanna do that and the 1.8 T is what you can get, rest assured that car is really no disappointment at all. I don't think so. A Little bit less horsepower, but it's just as fun to drive and enjoy if that's why you're buying this car. And I will point out, we did a test drive on that car just last year, nice little sort of a, a fun touristy trip on Route 66. And you can see that review by clicking on the link down below in the information section. Watch it, it's a lot of fun. I had fun doing it. The other thing I like is click on the big red link right here, subscribe to our YouTube channel because I test drive one to two cars a week, plus I have a new video almost every other day. There's always something new. So stay tuned.